Okay. The open meeting law requires that I notify the public that this meeting is being recorded. Therefore, please be aware that an audio and visual recording of this meeting is made by Boston City TV, a part of the City of Boston Office of Cable Communication. Recording in progress. And is being broadcast on Xfinity Channel 24, RCN Channel 13, and Fios Channel 967. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our board chair, Wesley Ireland. Hang on just one second, guys. Sorry. I'm going to check, make sure the captions are in order before we get going. I'm not, I'm not up. I'm still trying to work on it. This is West. Okay, I guess we'll um, go ahead and open our meeting. We'll call ourselves to order. We're going to start off as usual with introductions. I would like to ask each board member uh, to introduce themselves by saying their name, their role, and which region uh, or neighborhood of Boston they live in. I can begin myself. My name is West Ireland. I am signing. I will be using American Sign Language throughout the course of this meeting. I am a male, but the voice you will hear is that of females because we have female interpreters working this evening into English. I am the board chair uh, and I live in the North End. And I will call on each individual board member to introduce themselves based on the order that I see them on my screen. So let's start with Charlie. Go ahead, Charlie. Hi, my name is Charlie Kim. I am a resident over the North End, and I'm on the board representing parents with children with disabilities. This is Wes, thanks Charlie. Next, I would like to recognize Olivia. Go ahead, Olivia. Hi, my name is Olivia Richard. I am a board member, and I hail from Brighton. Thanks, Olivia. Lucia, go ahead. Hello, everybody, and thank you, Wes. My name is Dusia Lubovskaya, and or Dusia Alpha Short, and I'm the vice chair, and I am in Boston specifically. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Dusia. Paul, go ahead. Hi, my name is Paul Karen. I serve as the board secretary. I work at the Boston Planning and Development Agency, and I live in Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you, Paul. Elizabeth. Hi, uh, yes. Good evening, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Dean Crower. I live in the Back Bay neighborhood um, in Boston, and I um, am a board member. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, who do I see next? Juan Carlos. This is Wes Juan Carlos. Are you here? Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. This is Juan Carlos Ramirez Tapia, um, commission member, and I live in Boston South End. Thank you, Juan Carlos. And Carl. Yeah, hi, this is Carl. I live in Brighton Center, and I identify as a deaf blind person in that I am hard of hearing and blind. Thank you, Carl. Uh, now, before I introduce the commissioner, are there other board members that I might have missed who are on the call today, either on the phone or on the screen? Okay. Um, seeing none, I'm just checking to see if 
if I got everybody that I saw. So we have eight um, board members with us. I'm wondering if we have a quorum for this evening. Hi, this is Kristen McCosh, Commissioner. Yes, you do have a quorum with us. This is Wes, great, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, Commissioner, while you are with us and have the mic, would you mind introducing yourself, please? Sure, thanks, Wes. I'm Kristen McCosh, and I'm the Disability Commissioner and ADA Title II Coordinator for the city. Welcome, everybody. Thanks very much. So I just noticed another board member is with us who's just joined the meeting. So I would like to have Paulette introduce yourself, please. Good evening, everybody. This is Paulette Durrett from Mattapan. <clears throat> thank you, Paulette. And thank you everyone um, for being with us tonight and taking time out of your schedule. Okay, so next on our agenda, we will approve the minutes from our last meeting. That was the meeting last month in June. Would someone make a motion to open the discussion to approve the minutes from last month's meeting? This is Carl, I make a motion to approve the minutes. This is Paul, I second the motion. This is Wes. Thank you, Carl, for making that motion and Paul for seconding the motion. All in favor, please raise your hand or uh, to signify aye or say aye aloud. Aye. 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 This is Wes. Um, any nays? And any abstentions? Okay, um, the, mo the motion passes. The June meeting minutes are approved as written. Next on our agenda, we have a presentation this evening, which is about accessibility at regional public beaches by Save the Harbor, Save the Bay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioner, um, and the board. Uh, we are delighted to be here. My name is Chris Mancini. I'm the Executive Director of Save the Harbor, Save the Bay. And uh, we're pleased to be invited here to share some of our long time and especially our recent work on uh, breaking down barriers along lines of accessibility on the region's public beaches. I'm going to ask, um, I'll, I'll let our our policy coordinator, Jason, introduce himself and share his screen. Hello, um, my name is Jason. Um, I use he, him pronouns, and I am the policy coordinator at Save the Harbor, Save the Bay. Um, and um, if you um, would allow me to um, please share my screen, um, that would be appreciated. Thank you. I will start the presentation just to share a little bit of background about Save the Harbor. For those who don't know us, we uh, were founded in 1986 um, to really drive the cleanup of Boston Harbor. And uh, that was largely accomplished through grassroots and leadership efforts um, and the building of the Deer Island Sewage Treatment Plant. As a result, we now have some of the cleanest urban beaches in the country here in Boston. I know there's been a lot of news stories lately about all the bacteria and beach closures because of the rain, but I do like always to point out that South Boston's beaches are never on that list. Um, they really are uh, swimmable and clean every single day of the year. Um, 
ever since we had the water clean, got the water clean, we've worked on connecting people to those resources through uh, free programs and events, a grant, a grant program that supports free programs and events on the, uh, on the region's beaches and on uh, free cruises to the Boston Harbor Islands. Uh, we also manage the Metropolitan Beaches Commission for the Massachusetts Legislature, and that work is a lot of what we'll be talking about today. So, as the slide says, we're now focused not only on protecting those natural resources, but also connecting people to them. Uh, this is our, uh, our watershed. This is the area we work. Uh, the area we work from Nahant to Nantasket. We focus on the state-run beaches uh, in these towns and cities and neighborhoods. And uh, that's what uh, the most recent report that we've done with the Metropolitan Beaches Commission um, addresses. So Jason, next slide. Uh, even prior to this kind of round of accessibility hearings that we've done, um, you know, I like to think Save the Harbor has been a longtime uh, ally and partner, um, really, again, trying to connect everybody to the harbor. Um, we see little barriers, large and small, uh, everything from the ramps down to the beach is getting full of sand. I think this is a great photo. You can see how deep that is and how it could, you know, bar entry uh, for a stroller or a wheelchair. Um, we've also partnered for a number of years with Triangle Inc. Uh, to host at least one annual uh, beachability event to uh, you know, kind of take over the, the beach in East Boston. And we do our best to make uh, all of our programs accessible um, physically, uh, language-wise, interpretation-wise, um, including our cruises around Boston Harbor. You know, in the past four years, we've added things like language interpretation, ASL interpretation, um, and uh, one recent barrier we've seen, though, after COVID, uh, the boating industry changed, and we had to change our model. Um, now, not all of our boats, because of where they have to dock, are always accessible by ramp. So we're really working, although they used to be, um, and some still are. So we are working to get that back 100%. So I'll turn it over to Jason to talk about our recent efforts um, and our Breaking Barriers report, which is, I think, what you all came to hear about and how we think uh, we can, uh, some, some asks we may have for the board. Great, thank you, Chris. So um, this timeline here shows um, some of our recent work uh, related to um, increasing accessibility um, to our public beaches and our harbor islands for um, members of our community with disabilities. And um, this topic, um, we heard um, loud and clear from community members that this was really important um, during our um, hearing process um, to increase accessibility for um, people of color in our neighborhoods to their urban beaches. Um, and during that process, we really identified um, accessibility for people with disabilities as something to um, really focus on moving forward. And so um, I'll go into each of these steps um, on the timeline now. Um, so in November of 2021, we hosted a public hearing on access for people with disabilities um, alongside the Metropolitan Beaches Commission, um, where we focused on hearing about the lived experiences, of um, those with disabilities um, trying to access our harbor um, walk, the waterfront, and our beaches. And we had over 70 advocates, um, elected officials, and community leaders attend this meeting, um, which was co-chaired by State Senator Brendan Crichton and State Representative Adrian Madaro of the Metropolitan Beaches Commission. And um, your very own Christy McCosh was a panelist at this um, hearing, and so we really appreciated um, the input from her there, as well as Coleman Nee, the executive director of Triangle Inc. And so moving um, forward from that, um, we also heard from Dr. Andrea Gail Bennett, um, who's the deputy secretary of the Executive Office of Veterans Services, who um, said this quote, which we think really um, captures kind of the disconnect um, that many people feel um, when they aren't able to access beaches, saying that um, access to the beach is limited to those with physical disabilities, which turns them into spectators instead of participants. And so we thought this was really powerful, and we've kind of been using this to guide our um, policy and advocacy work uh, moving forward. 
and ensure that um, those of our community members with disabilities are fully active participants. And so um, based on our public hearing and community feedback process, this year we um, released our report, Breaking Barriers, um, and specifically um, in terms of disability access, we identified recommendations including beach cleanups to ensure that walkways and ramps are able to be used for people to access the beach, as well as accessibility resources such as mobility mats um, and beach wheelchairs at um, some of our main urban beaches such as Carson, Revere, um, Constitution. Um, we also suggested and recommended that the DCR, Department of Conservation and Recreation, conduct an accessibility audit of all of their metropolitan beaches in order to assess the additional needs and staffing associated um, with uh, making beaches more accessible. And we thought that by measuring this problem and identifying gaps there, um, we could really focus on um, how to move forward in making these spaces more accessible. Um, and so at Save the Harbor, um, we decided to work with DCR um, to implement these recommendations and address the barriers um, that we heard from members of the disability community. And some of those were that um, there was a lack of spontaneity and people felt that they had to plan ahead to um, ensure that resources were available for them when they actually came to beaches. And there was a lack of communication um, in terms of what resources were available at each beach um, and how people could go about using them. And so we partnered with the DCR Universal Access Program, which is a statewide program um, that provides outdoor uh, recreation opportunities um, across the ability spectrum. And um, they have a lot of adaptive sports um, programs and other um, um, other programs to increase accessibility and um, the universal access program team asked us for help in terms of um, identifying what an everyday experience is like for someone who is going to one of our beaches and trying to use either the beach wheelchairs or mobility mats um, around Boston. And so um, the project that I am leading this summer for Save the Harbor is an accessibility audit of uh, metropolitan beaches in our area. And so we uh, go to each beach um, that were mentioned earlier, and we see the state of the accessibility resources there, ensuring that um, the wheelchairs and mats are in good condition. And we also ask uh, lifeguards, community members, um, how the, uh, how people are using these uh, resources and how that could be improved. Um, we also look at um, signs around beaches to see if there are publicly available information available um, about these resources. And um, we are reporting all of these results back to DCR um, so that they can prioritize where to include more resources or more information. In addition, this summer we have um, uh, many beach events and we are trying to make sure that um, we're centering accessibility in these. So Chris already mentioned our beach ability event um, in partnership with Triangle Inc. And um, this is a really popular event that sees hundreds of people come to Constitution Beach each year. And we also have our all access Boston Harbor cruises which are completely free and um, those are accessible as well and those go to the Harbor Islands. And um, moving on to how we think that we can work with the commission, the board moving forward, um, in addition to amplifying the recommendations from the Metropolitan Beaches Commission report, um, we hope that um, your team can encourage the Department of Conservation and Recreation to invest more in the Universal Access Program and to publicize their accessibility efforts. And um, lastly, um, we hope that we can work together to um, create an, a communication strategy to increase awareness of existing resources and um, push for more resources to be um, implemented on our urban beaches. And to this point, I'd like to say that um, I was able to make it to the ADA day yesterday at City Hall, and uh, that was a really exciting 
um, celebration and um, there was a lot of organizations that we would love to work with moving forward and so um, I think that this is a great opportunity to kind of capitalize on that um, excitement and all the progress that um, was discussed yesterday and um, just to get more of the disability community out on the beach to make sure that um, people know that these spaces are for them, that they feel welcome and included in these programs. And so um, we really appreciate um, you inviting us here to this meeting and we are really looking forward to um, seeing how we can work together to uh, make all of our blue spaces more inclusive and accessible. Thank you. We'd love to take questions, um, if you have any, or maybe the presentation was so good, all questions have been answered. <laughs> I will add that, you know, one challenge is that the Department of Conservation and Recreation is perennial under, perennially under-resourced. Um, and often, you know, as, as j demonstrated by what Jason just said, you know, the Universal Access Program based in Worcester, you know, really asking us, like, we don't really have a sense of the day to day. And obviously everybody's different, you know, we would love to get more, always get more feedback. Are people using the beaches? And when they're there, what are the challenges? If they're not, why not? I mean, the, the standard would be, the vision would be that anybody regardless of, of physical ability could spontaneously decide to head down to South Boston or Revere wherever and just enjoy the beach. Um, I'm going to drop one more link in the chat which is this um, news about what Greece is doing this year. This is probably a bit of a reach for Massachusetts at the moment but it's just a 200 beaches with me mechanized chairs going you know, on rails into the water, all you know, really kind of a gold standard, I think, for this type of access. Uh, should we call on folks? It's not our meeting, so I don't wanna. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I, Wes, I just DM'd you. I do see Kristen Sand and Elizabeth Sand. I can call on participants. I want to recognize Elizabeth. Hi, thank you very much for this. Is Elizabeth um, Dean Cloud. Thank you very much for the presentation. This is a, these are very exciting opportunities to hear about. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about um, the uh, excursions to the Harbor Islands? Once people are at the Harbor Islands, are there acceptable pathways? That's a great question. Uh, Jason, you can probably do it even in more detail. We go to Spectacle and George's Islands are the two. Um, and yeah, Spectacle is fully accessible, um, paved pathways all around the island. Some of the best views in the harbor. Um, and temperature-wise, one of the coolest places to be in, in a hot, humid summer like this. Um, and Jason, can you talk about George's? Also? Um, I'm not sure if the entirety of George's Island um, is fully paved and accessible, but I know there are um, many um, pathways through the island um, that um, are paved, but I can't say for certain that the 100% um, of the island is. We'll look into that. It is features an 18th, 19th century fort, um, so there are, there are some areas that are unaccessible to anybody but um, <laughs> we also run fishing uh, and crabbing programs from the piers and docks which again are all completely accessible yeah we'll get back to you on um, that though Elizabeth okay thanks I appreciate that what uh, Olivia I see your hand next. <clears throat> yeah, this is Olivia Richard. Um, I've actually swam at Spectacle in one of those accessible beach chairs. Uh, the issues I see are like there's nowhere to store your personal chair. 
when you're in a beach chair that's really safe or secure. So it's just kind of sitting there and you're hoping it doesn't walk away. That is fantastic, to, not good to hear, but that's really good feedback that hasn't come up yet and thank you. This is Wes. Uh, recognize Carl, go ahead. Yeah, hi, this is Carl. So, how many, you know, I think this is probably Boston to the hidden secret. So how many beaches do you currently oversee and how many beaches of those are available to the public? Great question. We only oversee public beaches and that's really our effort. And we're beyond just Boston. So it's 14 beaches total. And in Boston, I'm gonna have to count in my head, um, you know, all three miles of beach in South Boston, including Carson, M Street, and Pleasure Bay, uh, all the Dorchester beaches, which are uh, Tinian Beach and Malibu and Savin Hill, and then uh, Constitution Beach in East Boston. And then of course, there's the Curley Center as well, which is the city of Boston Beach. All of them have some measure of accessible infrastructure, whether that's mobility mats or sand wheelchairs or water wheelchairs. But, you know, it's, it is irregular and, you know, it often falls to our youth staff who are out there on a daily basis to kind of notice, well, the mobility mat has been completely covered over. We need to get down there and brush it off or call DCR. Um, or the lifeguards today, this is what Jason's team is doing, didn't seem like they knew about the wheelchair program. So if someone were to come ask for one, you know, again, you lose that spontaneity, you lose that ability to simply enjoy the, the day. This is Wes, Commissioner McCosh. Thanks, Wes, and thanks, Jason and Chris, for your presentation. It was excellent. We really appreciate all that information. Um, my question is about the lack of access at some of the boat docks. You said it's changed since COVID. Can you talk a little bit about that? And also, are these the docks that, where the boats go to the Harbor Islands? Yes. And so the mitigation for that. Right. Um, this is hopefully a temporary. So we've worked for many years with the Bay State Cruise Company based out of Commonwealth Pier, uh, sorry, the World Trade Center, it will be called Commonwealth Pier when it's done. Um, and those trips were always completely accessible onto the Provincetown too. Uh, after COVID, Bay States, like many people's business model changed. They're not able to do as many trips with us. Um, and so we're working with another great company, Mass Bay Lines. Um, part of our funding requires us to be able to make the transportation out of the seaport district. So Mass Bay Lines comes over to Fan Pier uh, while Commonwealth Pier is under construction. And the while they do, the boats are accessible, it's getting the, one of the boats doesn't have a ramp that they can then bring to the island and get people off the boat. So what we are working on in the last 18 months is, well, we just, it could be as simple as we need a ramp on the island that lives there and is able to um, get over there. Again, once Commonwealth Pier is complete, this problem mostly goes away, but it's been a challenge in the interim. So is there no accessible boat right now? No, no, we still use Bay State Cruise Company at least once a week, if not more. Uh, so there are accessible trips to, to, to Spectacle Island. You mean Provincetown too? Provincetown too, yes. And is this, information posted on your website which ones are accessible and which ones are not gosh i hope so but i will be checking immediately to make sure <laughs> yeah i think that would be important messaging like you said about spontaneity yeah if someone gets up and just wants to take a cruise to the islands and they show up um that could be really devastating so Absolutely. i was going to have that message out there thank you This is Wes. 
I actually have a question myself um, for Chris and for Jason. Again, thank you very much for that presentation. My question is about requests uh, for the board, uh, particularly about speaking to the DCR about universe, the universal access program. Um, can you give us a little bit more specifics about what you would be looking for in terms of that to help just help us understand what the ask is? Um, you know, did you want us to write a letter encouraging um, universal access program um, in terms of safety, et cetera? Can you give us a little more detail on that? Yeah, no, that's a really fantastic question. Um, I suppose the ask would be, um, yes, probably something in the form of a letter, but maybe maybe a follow-up conversation before then with, between us um, to kind of, we'd love your input on how does the communication especially, <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to phrase it, how does their communication online um, and the availability of these resources coming across to the public in general. Again, we've done our hearings, we've put out uh, surveys, but again, we're just continuously trying to collect more information um, and where those gaps are to be able to, I think just having one more voice, and it may not even be directly to the universal access program. Maybe the ask is actually, we should strategize together. You know, is it something like, we just saw the governor increase DCR's budget by $12 million for the first time in a number of years. Um, we're trying to find out where that money's going, but same same point, is there a dollar amount? Is there specific capital investments that we would like to see um, and you would like to see that we can be aggressively advocating for through the existing channels? This is Wes, thank you for that. Um, I think this will be something for the board to consider after we've had a chance to absorb the material. Do we have any other questions from the board for the presentation from Chris and Jason? Okay, so then seeing none, Chris and Jason, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for joining us this evening. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for letting us come here and you know, I will offer that we, we will work on say a draft of something for you to review uh, or at least consider in terms of what that ask would be and how to communicate that to the, the powers that be. That's great. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, I think a letter would be very helpful, it might be a, a nice accessible first step so we can start by thinking about that. All right, thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Let me just check out the agenda to see what is next on our list. Uh, this is Wes, apologies. Charlie, I see your hand is raised. Thanks, Wes. I, I, I do have, I think it's kind of a, to the board and maybe to ask the commissioner to, when there are requests for uh, support for funding, especially from different organizations, um, and I'm not sure how we uh, gain that knowledge, but how do we understand how you know the budgets are placed? Because if, if there's a request for funding to come from another organization, does that mean that their funding goes down and it gets placed? Like just to understand how it all operates. So when we do put in requests and letters, that we make sure that we understand what's being asked for, it, it, is it being asked as far upstream um, uh, where the budgets get placed versus asking for a department to, to, to move funds into another department. So I think that's something to consider as we look at the letters um, because I think there's multiple organizations and that's where I, I'm not too clear on how all those, if, if they call all the funding comes from a general pool from the state or the city and then it gets filtered down um, under certain policies but I think that that would be helpful to, to understand as we advocate for certain organizations um, and other organizations by letter. Uh, uh, Chris, go ahead. 
I don't, uh, Charlie, I don't know if that was, you know, in response directly to what we had just proposed, but I did want to maybe clarify that we wouldn't be asking the board to advocate for resources for our nonprofit. We were really trying to advocate for resources for the resource, for the state, for the DCR, for like the capital expenses. Um, so just, just in case that was unclear uh, in this case. Thank you. Okay, this is Wes. Bear with me one second, just rearranging screens. Okay. All right, so um, I was just looking at the agenda. It is time for the chair's report, ironically. Um, so I just have three short blurbs to share for my report. Um, this month, July is Disability Pride Month, as we know. That's the first thing. The second thing I wanted to mention was that there was an article I saw a couple of weeks ago. It was about two or three weeks ago. Um, and that it said that airlines may finally be able to accommodate travelers who want to stay in their wheelchairs throughout the entirety of a flight. The article mentioned that Delta Airlines has been working on a concept about this possibility and that they are hopeful that it might be ready within 18 months. So that's 2025. We might be seeing folks able to stay in their wheelchairs um, from for the entireties of their journey and not have to uh, switch chairs or worry about the potentiality of danger to the chair. The other thing, that, the last thing was that yesterday was the ADA Day, Americans with Disabilities Act Day for the city of Boston. Um, and that was an honor of this, a celebration in honor of the ADA that was signed on July 26, 1990. I was able to attend the celebration for the first hour and it was really great to see so many people there. And honestly, I wondered if next year they should get a bigger tent. I think that might be a good idea. Um, it was really great to see several board members there as well. And I wanted to offer my apologies that I wasn't able to stay for the entire duration of the event, but it was really, really hot. And I just, I just was not able to tolerate it for that long. So I needed to get myself the work cooler. Uh, any comments or questions for my board report? That is it. Any questions or comments? Okay, seeing none. Um, great, we can move on to the next agenda item, which is the commissioner's report. Commissioner Rakosh, the floor is yours. Thanks, Wes, and uh, thanks everybody. Um, I'll pick up where Wes left off, which is talking about our annual ADA Day celebration yesterday. Um, I agree with Wes, it was very hot, and we were, oh, we're always concerned about that, so we do take measures to ensure that people remain safe. We had a, a cooling bus from the MBTA, which I actually checked out myself. It's air conditioned and available throughout the whole event. We had a water truck from Boston Water and Sewer. We could get cold water. We did have a tent um, for shade, but Wes, I will take your input back to my team and see if we can get a bigger one for next year. And then we also had um, Boston EMS is always available for anyone who uh, felt overwhelmed by the heat. We didn't hear any um, complaints or reports, although I know it was very hot. I also got hot myself, so I appreciate that. But I was really glad to see all the board members who came. And if any of you didn't get a t-shirt, uh, please let us know. We can send you one in the mail. We have um, plenty of t-shirts left over, so I wanna make sure all the board members get them. Um, it was a great turnout despite the heat. Uh, I don't have any numbers yet from my staff, but we'll be getting them this week. To me, it looked as crowded as it's ever been, which is nice. 
So um, we also had over 20 organizations and city departments giving information. And we had a list of people that we had to turn away, people who wanted a table we didn't have space for. So if we get a bigger tent, maybe we'll be able to get more tables. So I'll keep that in mind for next year. And then of course, two years from now will be the 35th anniversary and that may be a bigger celebration on the Boston Common with other um, nonprofit agencies. So stay tuned. Um, you may have noticed on the t-shirts that the back of the t-shirt was the Boston Breaks logo. So on that note, we um, officially kicked off our outreach on Boston Breaks yesterday as far as social media, um, signage around the community. We're really trying to promote the um, awareness of pedestrians with disabilities and educating people with disabilities on the new infrastructure that's along the curb. Things like bike lanes, outdoor dining, electric vehicle charging stations. So we want to let people know there is new infrastructure, but along with that, um, there are many people using these routes, so we need to ask people to be courteous and watch out for pedestrians with disabilities who have unique needs, like being able to access parking spaces and curb ramps and um, everything else that we have along the sidewalks. So we did honor the streets cabinet for all their work because I know we do hear complaints um, from the community and also really just questions and concerns about bike lanes and intersections and things like that. But I just wanted to let everybody in the community know that my office really is in on all those conversations. Pretty much every single conversation that's had about these things, we are involved with my architectural access staff, my admin staff. So if you do have any uh, concerns yourselves, please email us at disability doc at disability at boston.gov or you can always call us and let us know and we'll work on them so just two other um, quick announcements um, the mezzanine lift the mezzanine in city hall plaza will now be accessible by a vertical lift rather than an incline lift i like to call this area the pyramid because it's basically just a pyramid of brick stairs which is really inaccessible even though there is currently an incline lift it's really um, inconvenient it doesn't always work and it's just not really a dignified way to get up to the mezzanine but now thanks to funding from the mod we have a new vertical lift and the ribbon cutting will be next wednesday july 26th at 12 noon in city hall so if anyone would like to attend any board members please email us and let us know mayor Wu will be there um, i'll be doing the first official ride on the lift so um, it's a, it'll be a great celebration, uh, appropriate month where we're celebrating the ADA. So please join us if you're available. And then my last update is that we um, have a new hire who will be starting in August. This will be our training specialist position. And we will be doing trainings on everything from um, topics for city departments, uh, ways to increase systemic access in their work to creating um, ASL, like canned videos, they call them things for like heat emergencies and water bans and things like that. And also we'd like to do community training. So if you have any ideas on what you think would be a good training we could put together, please let us know and we can uh, take that into account in our planning for the new position. And uh, with that, I will turn it back to Wes, but I am available for any questions. So thank you all. Hi, this is Wes here. Thank you so much. Elizabeth? First, was going to be Olivia. Yeah, that's fine. Olivia, go ahead. Yeah, Olivia. Thank you. Sorry, interpreter error. I was just going to, this is Olivia. I was just going to say, uh, sorry I missed ADA Day. It sounds like I missed a party. Uh, between the heat and the fact that uh, the B line shutdown has me trapped in my neighborhood, uh, I'm kind of sad. <laughs> um, I need a t shirt though. Um, yeah. One other thing I've noticed is people are getting a little bit ridiculous with the blue bikes. I saw one riding a blue bike in Star Market. Well, thank you for that report, Olivia. I haven't seen that, 
particular um, violation, but that is uh, something we'll take note of. And uh, like I said, we do work very closely with the streets cabinet on these issues. Again, to really raise awareness about the rules of the road and interacting with pedestrians, uh, particularly with bicycles, because we know David Vieira was uh, really committed to that and he pushed us on that. So um, Colleen gave a very nice dedication yesterday to David and um, we will definitely be elevating that message. So thank you for raising that. I would also like to add um, to Olivia's comment about the blue bikes. She is correct. It's not just one area. There's multiple areas where people leave the blue bikes and they do not park them in the bike stands, such as Hanover Street. It's a residential area and I've seen two bikes in a very popular area of restaurants just bikes left there so it needs to be identified and taken care of i just want to let you know go, elizabeth go ahead um thanks um this is elizabeth i actually had wanted i had a, a comment about ada day but as long as you've mentioned about the blue bikes um, is there some way that people um, that they must have to pay that the bike release for their use but is there some way that the system could be modified so that um, it would be in the rider's interest to you know make sure that it was you know here we've got these we have the sophisticated parking meters is there some way that there could be, it could be noted somehow of, you know, that even though people can return the bikes in multiple places, it is there, it might not, might require a little bit more thinking it through, but since I don't use that program, I don't know much about it, but I was wondering, you know, with other things that are tracked for, like on both ends, is there any way that that might be a way that the system could be modified? Um, do you mean as far as like where people leave the bikes? Yeah, but in, in leaving the bikes, um, that I mean that they would be fined or accountable for you know the price of the bike or something if they weren't. I, I don't. As I said, it might take more of a, a thinking through. But that was one thought. But while um, I have the flyer, and I only wanted to compliment. Uh, um, how well uh, the ADA celebration went um, and how well attended it went. So thanks to um, your team, uh, Kristen, and the um, other organizations that participated. I think that is a great idea in the future. If there is a bigger tent that more organizations could participate. I'd also request that um, the speaking portion be moved up to earlier because a lot of us were challenged by the heat. And certainly when um, Mayor Wu was speaking, um, had it been able to be at a time where perhaps Wes, well, uh, Wesley could have joined us. It, that doesn't always work out. Obviously these things are open for a block of time. But it was supposed to start at 1.30. It actually didn't start till more like 1.40. And because they asked that those of us, we appreciated that for the board members who were there, to be asked to be up by the podium, but that was in the bright sun, and that that was really pretty. Um, uh, that that was the most challenging part of the event, even though um, I think we were all, you know, honored to be part of it too. If you could be, so thanks again for the work, and that would just be my thought: is that the speaking portion could be at an earlier point, so more people are still there. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, I will say uh, we were supposed to start earlier on the speaking program, but it really is up to the mayor's schedule. And when she's available, we have to, um, you know, meet her schedule requirements because she's, you know, she's the top uh, administrator in the city, and, and oh, she's sure. the one who controls that schedule. But we will definitely pay attention to that um, moving forward as far as 
we know the heat. It's funny because every year we've had ADA day for the last 13 years, it's always threatened rain. And yesterday was like the one, the only day that I remember that it hasn't threatened to rain, but it was very, very hot. So um, definitely hear you on that and we'll look for um, more shade next year. And then just a note on the blue bikes, um, I believe that the blue bikes um, meter for fee is not turned off until they're actually docked back in the stand. So there are incentives for users to put the uh, bikes back in the dock, but we will work closely with them moving forward on our campaign for messaging because um, you know people do have to sign up for the program. There are some things that you sign, maybe that's a way that we could put our messaging um, directly to the users. We could include like videos and things in as part of the registration. So um, we will definitely take all those ideas back and, and thank you for that. Thanks. I'd like to recognize Paul. Go ahead, you have your hand raised. Yes, I just want to um, say thank you for a great day yesterday. Commissioner McCosh and Colleen were outstanding, especially Colleen's tribute to David Vieira was well recognized. Uh, Mayor Wu and City Councilor President Flynn served us with class and dignity by recognizing all and gave great speeches. And it's by far the most attended ADA event I've ever been to. It's about on the city level and at City Hall Plaza. And it was just outstanding all, 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 all around. You know, everyone participated from the Boston police to the media. Everyone, everyone was, had respect and dignity and it was a well-served event. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Uh, we always appreciate your support. And I was really glad that you were able to attend. Um, so just a final note after my report, um, I am actually on vacation this week, so I came up to Boston for the event yesterday, but I am not going to be able to stay on until the end of the meeting, so I'm going to um, sign off now, but if anyone has any questions, you can, um, you know, give them to Wes. My staff is on the call, and they can uh, bring them back to me, and I can get back to you um, next week. So thank you, everybody. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Enjoy your vacation. Thanks, Swiss. Everybody else could still could stay. We have business to complete. I'm looking at the agenda. The next item is announcements. Do any of the board members have announcements that they would like to share? Charlie Kim, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, this is more a, kind of a, a question and follow up and, and an announcement yeah. because I couldn't make last month's meeting. Um, there was one piece that, that, that I wanted to ask it, it, either for the, uh, the commission and, and possibly the commissioner, but maybe we follow up. Last month, there was the large bio convention that came in to the city of Boston and then the mayor committed, I believe a $4 million grant for um, a thousand plus jobs to be created um, well-paying jobs for the biotech and life sciences industry and, and I was just wondering if the Disabilities Commission has any um, is sit, sitting I believe there's a task force being formed or something like that where they would be encouraging either a carve out or some sort of um, awareness that some of these jobs and encouraging some of the life sciences companies especially with these grants to um, to not only just recognize in their DI policies for hiring, but also to create jobs uh, for um, adults and also potentially interns and students with disabilities that they would have um, some sort of a priority or understanding, especially when announcements for uh, new positions and grants that are, are being forwarded by um, 
by the city. So I didn't know if that was something that, that um, could be discussed or if that was actually even brought up um, when that announcement came out. So I was kind of doing some research to see if anything was discussed for um, under some of the, um, uh, the initiative for not just um, you know, well-paying jobs, but also carve-outs uh, for uh, adults, uh, interns, students aiding uh, with disabilities. So just wanted to ask, kind of bring that up. And then also, second piece, I, um, I know the commissioner came off, and I didn't know when the right time was to ask kind of follow up from her meeting minutes uh, from the June um, meeting. There was a large portion that was dedicated to some of the metrics on the Boston uh, Public Schools transportation updates. And I think one of the things that I would ask the commission and the commissioner as they do receive it, the first line stated that TransDev is in charge of all hiring, training, uh, collection of metrics and all that. And I think as an advisory board and as a board and as a commission, if one entity is in charge of reporting and self-accountability, I think part of our job is to then possibly ask the question, hey, how good is that data, right? If you're in charge of collecting your own data, if you're in charge of accounting for your own data, is that accurate? And then what are you presenting? I think the big question is, what are you not presenting to uh, the Disabilities Commission that we're asking? And so one of the things, the on-time percentage seems to be increasing, but the question is, I guess on time is one thing, but uh, one of the items there is chron chronic absenteeism for students with disabilities. And so the question is, that's great that you're getting the bus to school on time, but are the kids getting on the bus, right? And we clearly know in one of the metrics that was presented, 27%, I believe, of the students are covered with a monitor. So that means 27% of the students, it doesn't matter if their bus is on time or not, they're not allowed to get on that bus to get to school. So I don't know if that's part of transportation or not, but I think these are part of what we, as an advisory board, should be looking at, right? Thank you for the metrics, but what do they mean, right? And then what are they not also um, giving us the, you know, additional information for clarity because we represent, um, you know, the students, we represent the parents, um, and also uh, adults with, with disabilities that um, if they're presenting things, are they actually presented in the context that, that, that we are supposed to be representing our constituencies? So that's kind of the two points that I, I you know, the one point was with the mayor's announcements for jobs. Are there any carve outs um, or, or line items or I don't know the appropriate word, but for you know adults or interns with disabilities, and then the second part was part of the the, the mayor's or not the mayor's, I apologies, um, the commissioner's report that came from BPS Transportation. Wes, <clears throat> excuse me. This is Wes. Um, thank you, Charlie, for that for those questions as well as the announcement. Um, I think the job incentives with the life sciences that you mentioned um, is a great idea. Um, and we can ask Commissioner McCosh to speak more to that um, because I know that the city of Boston has some kind of job fair annually for people with disabilities. And I don't know whether that's something that those particular life science com uh, companies and organizations are taking part in, trying to have a presence there to encourage employment of people with disabilities in that sector. So we can ask Commissioner McCosh to speak to that when she comes back from vacation next week. And then for the VPS uh, busing question, I believe that for the moment, because school is out of session, that work is on hold, but there will be new incentives put in place for August, uh, beginning in the month of August, and some changes as well. Um, I, I don't have the details, unfortunately, but my understanding is that um, the consumers will be Oh, excuse me, that, the, that was a misinterpretation. Commissioner will be issuing a report 
um, based on the monitoring that she's doing of those matrix on a quarterly basis. And so we can also ask Andrea that question when she returns from vacation about whether there has been any update to the school busing metrics for July and for August um, as they come in, because I know that some city of Boston uh, uh, disabled students have been going to school during the summer, going to programs, going to school during the month of July, and I think they will in August as well, but I haven't heard anything back. Um, so, we're sort of pending at the moment. Are there any other announcements? Thank you again, Charlie. Any other board members having announcements as we proceed with the agenda? All right, next on our agenda, I guess we can move on um, if there are no other announcements. Next, what I see is um, we have old business. I need my glasses. Hang on one second. I can't read what this says. Hold on one second. I got to find my glasses. I'll be right back. Mrs. West, I apologize. I can't find my glasses. Uh, so we will muddle through together. Wes, if it's helpful, the, the first item under old business says letter of advocacy, RES 1153, an act building a more accessible Massachusetts approval of draft. Thank you, Colleen, <laughs> you're saving me. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, does anyone have, uh, excuse me, has anyone had a chance to look at that draft letter? Or again, S-1553, we talked about it um, a bit ago. I believe a copy is available to be put in the chat if folks wanna review it now in real time. So that has now been placed in the chat. That's the link. Um, and I don't know if anybody had an opportunity prior to the meeting to look at this. Why don't we give ourselves just a few minutes for people to review it now, and then we can have a conversation. Wes, I know that um, Patricia gave a presentation a few months back about this bill. So this is the draft that we have in place and I would put it to the board as to your reactions.
Charlie, I see your hand. Oh, thank you. I, uh, I I read through the draft and then I I, I was going backwards to try to understand the legislation, um, and then I was doing some googling and, and I closed the all the windows before I got to the meeting. But then there's kind of a summary of bills that are, and, and maybe um, if Carl's here, that there there were three bills specifically. Um, for uh, uh, persons with disabilities, and then these two cover um, the, the specific letter that we're writing, and then there was a third, and, and one of the one of the people that we were writing, um, Representative Christine Barber, was supporting the third bill, and so my question was, why are the why is it just the, specifically these two? Because I think they all three had to, had to do with housing and accessibility. And then the third um, proposed, I believe, bill uh, was not wrapped into this letter. And I'm, I'm trying to frantically find find that third one. And I didn't know if Carl or somebody else would, would be able to. I don't have any problems with the letter. I just didn't know if we were supposed to, if all three were supposed to be in there or just these two specifically were called out. This is West. Charlie, I'm sorry. Um I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to. I. What was the third one? Are these are I'm these trying, bills? Yeah. I'm tr yeah. That's what I'm trying to find right now because the, one's the Senate and one's the House, right? The one one five three and the two two nine one. There was another one that I that according to online that's been it, that, that was from the state uh, that that Representative Christine Barber um, is supporting um, ties into this, but I was that's why I wanted to ask to double check if all three were supposed to be in there for this letter or just these two um because again i was trying to do research to understand the basis of these um of, of the bills that we write you know the letters of advocacy but i'm i'm, I'm Mrs. trying West, to go i i think potentially i might need to ask the co-chair for some help here This is Wes again. I um, I would need to ask um, I would need to ask Andrea um, to add that the specific names of the bills. Um, so I don't have that in front of me. Chair was I, I'll try to find that third one. I, it was on something that as I was clicking through from the state. So, um, but I have no problems with the letter um, as it, as it stands. I, it was just more of a detailed clarification if it's supposed to encompass all three. Again, I don't. I'm not sure, Carl. If if you, I'm I, here. Uh, I'm. I'm not sure. I'd have to do some looking. I just recall the two that were mentioned. I haven't had a chance to look at um, Representative Barbara Bill, so I don't have an answer for you tonight, but I'll take a look. And this is Charlie again, so maybe some clarification from Carl. Does it, and maybe I'm thinking too, in, in this too much, does it, does it matter if all three are named or is it more of the the principle behind the fact that we are supporting um, uh, supporting the, the the actual principle of the of what the three uh, you know all, of all the bills that encompass for uh, you know accessible Massachusetts. So this is Carl. I believe the two bills have to do with restructuring the AAB to meet architectural access guidelines in terms of employment and how employment with employers that have less than 15 employers and accessible housing. I think that's what the other two are. Um, if Representative Barbara Bell is part of that, that's fine. I, 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 just, I hesitate to give an answer with no, but it is important, I think, for us to say that we support the other two. This has been in and out of committee several times over the past several sessions, and every year we get a bit closer. So it's my hope that this year we will um, we will get this passed. Um, what I can do is 
tomorrow go look at Representative Bob and the all the amendments she wrote, and I'll take a look. And if it's there, I'll then email Andrea or Ella West saying this is worthy of incorporating them to the letter or not. It might be a language difference. I don't know. I'll have to look. But, I, but the letter, I agree with Charlie. The letter as is with the two two bills that are currently in it is fine. This is Wes. Okay, thanks for that. I will follow up with Andrea as well uh, to confirm that or to confirm or to figure out, sorry, that's my daughter, um, whether or not we need to add that third bill, um, whether it should be contained in the letter. Um, I don't think it should be an issue. That's my, my first sort of response, but <clears throat> I'll follow up with Andrea. Any other questions or comments about that? If we need to update the letter after we've confirmed and verified that that third bill should be mentioned explicitly, um, do we have someone from the board who would make a motion to approve that letter in advance of that potential edit? Mr. Carl, I so move. Okay, then who can second Carl's motion that we approve this letter in advance of that potential edit? I'll second. I see Charlie as the second, thank you. Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying or saying aye or putting your hand in, physically in the air. Aye. 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 Uh, aye. Uh, Great, any nays, any opposition? And any abstentions? Uh, Ducia. Ducia, are you abstaining? No, I was going to say I or <laughs> raise my hand or something. <laughs> Sorry about that. Not at all. Not at all. It's a little bit of a timing issue on Zoom. No problem. So that was an I as well. Okay, great. Just making sure that all of everybody's votes are counted appropriately. All right, so the motion passes. Um, we, we have the letter that is ready to go depending on that third bill, we, which we will get confirmation from Andrea about as soon as possible. Great. So now we can talk about the other letters. Uh, let's give folks an opportunity to read through that second letter and then we will discuss. This is Carl, what was the second letter? Wes, I can read it again if it helps. Colleen, could you please read that letter? Yes, it is the letter of advocacy um, R regarding Senate number 446, House number 4769, and act expanding access to trails for people with disabilities. Yes, and I found the letter. And I sent the link in the chat. Let's take a few minutes and talk about that. I do remember from the trails presentation, they had asked us if we could submit a letter of support. I know we had agreed, agreed to that and 
I wanted to see if there were updates to the draft, if anybody had any feedback for this draft. Is there any feedback? Not updates, but any feedback? Um, this is a, this is a Charlie. Yes. Um, question. Elizabeth, go ahead. Oops, sorry. And then Charlie. Um, yes, this is Elizabeth. Um, I, I think it's, um, fine to include stress, but I, I think if there's a way to, um, say something beyond stress that that would would be helpful I um I, I don't have um, I, I just taken a very brief look at, at the letters earlier but I um, I that's that's a cute statement about stress related issues. But I think it might, um, I just wonder if there's, if anyone can think of a way to um, include some um, I prep, think, prep. I think the presenter um, from the previous month on the trails was talking about people's mental health. Yes. And for those to be able to get outside, that it's so important um would you like to suggest a better word for us to choose no i think that's fine now that you've um refreshed my memory that that was also their um their choosing i i think it did indicate positive um health benefits i um i'm not sure that i can think of it on the fly i um Mm -hmm. But, um, but, but so I, I, I don't have a problem with the letter, but just didn't know. Are you saying, so are you okay with us leaving it as is? Um, in the interest of writing a letter of support, I, 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 I think, I think it, it's, um, it's okay as is. Um, Okay, I just wanted to be sure and understand your comment fully. Charlie? I just want to state that uh, the letter as it stands, um, I agree with it. I, 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 had, I wanted to go and I read the text for the proposed legislation, um, specifically as 446, so I just pull up again. Because when I read something that states working group, I get concerned that, because um, a lot of times the working groups uh, you know, how, how do they actually take things into action and get things done is always the big question of a working group versus a task force in, in, in public and government. But this one, uh, and I'm not sure people read it, it has, there will be, from, from what it appears um, in, in what is proposed, that there is a, a good representation um, of uh, uh, persons and people with disabilities that will be um, on um, in the group, so from parents, stakeholders, uh, somebody from the state. So that is why, um, without getting into full detail in the letter, that, that I think that this is a uh, this is a good piece of legislation because it starts off and then it has very, um, appears to have good guidelines for who should be represented on this working group and, and what, what the next goals and, and things to achieve within that. So I just wanted to, to make that comment for uh, support for the letter. Okay. Any additional comments or concerns about this letter? I make a motion that we send this letter out. 
This is Carl. Yes. Carl, you answered my next question. Who will second Carl? Charlie Kim, I identify your hand being raised. All in support, please raise your hand or say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The letter will be sent. I know we had paused the discussion last month. For the end of life options. And we were tabling it to this month. We didn't have enough time last month. I know it's somewhat controversial for us as a board. And we did hear from John Kelly last month form a board member of this group. And this was presented two or three years ago. And John Kelly has asked to support the bill. Not support it. No, no, no. Do not support the bill. Sorry, interpreter error. Opposed. Opposed. That was an interpreter error. I'm opening it to the board for discussion. To determine if we should write the letter and submit the letter of support. I'm sorry for opposition. This is Wes. Sorry, I've gotten confused. Charlie, I see Charlie's your hand, hand is, is, your hand is like raised, it. Charlie. Would you like to say something? I, I do. Um, it, it, and because of this, I, I, I guess I have, it, first it's a question and then kind of a little bit of a comment. I went to the video uh, to kind of watch uh, Mr. Kelly's comments because there wasn't that much in the meeting minutes um, and, and I wasn't able to attend the last meeting. Um, I, I guess I'm asking you, Chair, anybody else? Uh, because this, how do I learn a little bit more about this specific legislation so I can make a, um, and also speak with others to, to make a, a good judgment on these? Because the last two letters, um, you know, they're a little bit, I wouldn't say easier, um, but you know, when you read the legislation, they're, they're somewhat straightforward. This one has different pieces to it that, that I'm not, fully educated on it, and, and um, I know that it's important and we don't want to continue to, to delay, but I'm having a difficult time figuring out how I educate myself and, and what constituents I should be going to to ask about this too, um, you know, for those who I represent, in order to come back to be able to give a meaningful vote and a meaningful participation in, in discussion. That's, I guess I'm asking that here of, of, of my peers also and others. Elizabeth, would you like to respond to Charlie's question? Denise, I'm here if you want to switch. Great, yes, switch, thank you. Um, I actually um, wanted to make a different um, uh, statement. I think it's something I said last month might have um, sounded differently than intended, so I'm not specifically responding to Harry's um, question. Elizabeth, this is Wes. Go ahead. Say what you wanted to say. Um, last month, what I was trying to point out was just that I had been broached by, um, I've been broached 
over the years by a couple of people who have disabilities, but also um, have given me um, examples where they as individuals with disabilities would want to have um, the autonomy, um, the choice um, to possibly end their lives. But what my overarching message was, was in agreement with John Kelly, that I think that um, there are the element of prejudice against people in the disability community, of other people, including doctors, who we, as we heard from Dr. Lisa Ayazani in a different presentation, um, that doctors can have a very negative view about disability or the life of people with disabilities. And there's, there's even a term that's used of substituted judgment, someone inserting their own views and beliefs for, for um, who is it for someone even, um, or especially a, in this case, a doctor who could make a decision like this to say what someone else's value or quality of life is. So I think it is a complex issue. I think the only point I, think I was trying to make is I know there is some support of that bill in the disability community. However, I think for a commission like ours, the potential, as the letter does state, with misconceptions or abuses, I, I think that that's where um, the uh, where I think that the danger still lies. As a practical matter, I think increasingly there, there continue to be um, a greater number of votes in support. Um, I don't know if Carl has any better temperature of what's going on. And I, I saw that John Kelly was present for at least part of um, tonight's uh, meeting that, um, I'm sorry, John, I, I, just the way the screen is configured, I can see it. Um, but I, my concern is that this, as a practical matter, this probably is going to pass. Um, I think it's, so, but I, I think the importance of going on the record with concerns, um, recognizing that there might be individuals on our own commission who also either um, do not want to support our opposition to the bill or want to abstain. I have chaired the Cambridge Commission in the past, and we did not have, um, a, you, you know, a consensus among everyone in the group that um, felt that as we, the metrics as a board, we chose to direct in support of this opposition. So those, those are just the points I want to make, but I certainly, on behalf of myself as an individual and as a retired public health commission is not trying to back away from the importance of um, recognizing uh, that this disproportionately affects people with disabilities in a negative way. West. Thank you, Elizabeth, for that, for sharing your thoughts um, and your perspective. I have to be very honest here. Um, I feel like I will probably abstain from this vote myself because um, I see both sides. I think I understand perspectives on both sides. And um, at the moment, I think I will abstain. But I do want to hear from others, the rest of the board members, whatever thoughts you may have that you feel like sharing um, about whether this letter is something that we want to send. Um, we had talked about it two or three months ago. And I think it might, you know, whether or not we want to put individuals on the spot at the moment to ask each person to speak about their perspectives. Um, I think we need to have some sort of decision um, because 
our name will go out on this letter if we choose to send it. Does anyone want to share? Have any thoughts or questions? This is Carl. Um, I've been on the board since the beginning when John was on the board, I don't know, 13 years ago, before he left to commit his full time and energy to Second Thought. Um, historically, the commission had approved the letter and not supported the bill that's been in session. I, Elizabeth asked if I got a temperature. I, I haven't got a temperature on what's going to happen this term. Um, so, because I haven't really asked anybody about it. Um, my tendency is to support this letter, but I understand everybody else's point of view, and I want to respect everybody's point of view, but I support it because there have been times um, death blindness is not the only obstacle I've had to deal with in my life. I, I've had other issues that most of the people on this board do not know about, and while I was growing up, my parents were told uh, wouldn't it be better if Carl didn't, wasn't born or alive? And so I have a, if that was the prevailing thought at the time, I wouldn't be where I am today doing and accomplishing what I can accomplish. On the other hand, I can see where it might be an individual decision, but my, 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 but we do have to respect that this letter goes out, we'll have everybody's name on it. But my, my inclination is to um, support the draft letter. But I will, I will go with whatever the, the board want to do. This is Wes. Charlie, um, excuse me, uh, Carl, thanks for that. Um, Charlie, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I, and, and I guess that was part of my question, and, and thank you, Carl, because this, this bill is specifically for adults at 18, and, and from my perspective, just to give um, a, a little bit, when my daughter was born, there's, you know, what required were significant surgeries, went through many different episodes, and, and that exact statement came, um, that, that you heard as a child, came from friends and, and others, where I'm not sure people actually knew what they were saying, or, you know, wouldn't it be better if this, if, if there wasn't, or if the surgery didn't go well, or anything like that. And then from a parent's perspective, uh, for a child, you know, constantly advocating, fighting, and, 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 and really acting that way. I, I guess the perspective that I'm trying to understand for this bill is, at the age of 18, you know, when somebody's an adult, and I'm trying to understand, and I and I apologize that I don't, um, that that hopefully I'm, I'm asking this in the appropriate way. It, it in this letter it states that it, this bill could perpetuate pre disability prejudice and all that. Am I misunderstanding the bill in that? Is this supposed to give um, an adult the, the choice to be able to? Um, uh, proceed uh, with, with any end of life options in assisted, or or is this if they're incapacitated, then a physician steps in if there isn't a guard, like a guardian or family member? That's what I'm I'm, I'm trying to understand, because again, from my perspective, I, I I'm here seeing this as, as a parent that has been advocating for a child, and and I I have not, you know, uh, getting to that adult phase, and, and what happens thereafter is. Is, is, is very uh, new and, and, and I have not crossed that bridge yet. So, so I'm hoping that somebody can give me some perspective here. And this is Carl. Is John on the call? I don't know the specific details of the bill as written. John, are you on the call? And is that something you can clarify? This is Wes. John is here. John, would you like the floor? Sure. Thank you, Wes. And thank you, Carl. Um, what the bill does, uh, people over the age of 18 who have been diagnosed as terminal, <coughs> meaning six months or fewer to live, and there is 
the safeguards are that uh, you need to make an oral request and a written request, and uh, a doctor diagnoses you, and another doctor uh, confirms that. And there is a mandatory uh, evaluation. Um, the proponents say it's to make sure you're mentally sound, but what it is is a capacity hearing. So can you understand and make decisions? And so uh, almost everyone uh, does have that ability. And so the, the, the counselor's role is to judge the judgment of the patient. Uh, the, the, the counselor is tasked with um, you know, excluding a diagnosis of psychological or psychiatric illness or depression causing impaired judgment. So it allows for uh, someone who's depressed to be uh, treated as a rational actor. And our complaint about that is because there are no services for elders to receive care in their home. Um, people are left with a choice between a nursing home, impoverishing themselves to go to a nursing home, or assisted suicide. So we say that people don't really have a choice because the insurer decides whether you get treatment or not. And there are disabled people who have died because of denial of treatment, or it was too expensive. And what we've discovered is that the safeguards are put in, but then in subsequent sessions, Compassion and Choices comes back and starts calling the safeguards barriers. So what they do is they reduce the waiting time from 15 days to, to nothing. Because if they consider you already dying or near dying, you could be approved immediately. And, uh, you know, as someone mentioned, doctors view our lives as inferior and what it does is move, it operates on a better dead than disabled uh, mindset frame of reference. Um, and so, you know, it's basically like death as a benefit, meaning it would be better. And unfortunately, when disabled people are in extremis, we um, are at risk for not being intubated or not being uh, resuscitated. And so um, we see these bills as emanating from and reinforcing prejudice against people with disabilities. And although proponents say it's about pain and suffering, Oregon reports and experts alike say that it's really about disability and control and not about pain. And there's a class component to people who use it. They are overwhelmingly white with more education and, uh, you know, black people and brown people are opposed marginalized communities who have a hard time accessing care um, can, can end up on the, on the downside. And then everywhere assisted suicide has been implemented, uh, eligibility has been extended to non-terminal people with disabilities. 
and people unfortunately conflate or mix together uh, our disabled lives and um, um, yeah, I, I forget the end of that sentence. And then as someone who is described as paralyzed from the neck down, um, I, my character, when I appear in a movie, I'm always clamoring for death. And so I've experienced this firsthand and people will say that assisted suicide uh, should be available to people in my situation. And so uh, that's a pretty quick and dirty uh, little presentation, but I could certainly make myself available for more questions and answers. This is Wes. John, thank you very much um, for that, for giving us a little bit more detail and a little bit of a refresher. We've only got about 15 minutes left. I'm just aware of time here and our time together. So would anyone like to respond? Does anyone have any further thoughts or comments um, about the, this particular bill and whether or not we want to um, send or draft a letter? This is Carl. How many, I don't feel like we're going to have enough vote to pass. How many people are planning on a thing? And I mean, I don't know what to do because, um, what you've already said you're going to abstain. I think I hear from one or two others that might, so I don't know whether we should put this up to vote or not, or, or have a, a, a further discussion. I'm not sure what to do. This is Wes. Um, can we ask the board members who are willing to share whether or not they would plan on abstaining or would like to hold the vote? This is Olivia. Um, I plan on voting yes. Great, uh, Olivia, thank you for that. Okay. So hang on uh, one second, is, my daughter Paul, is right here. Me. Hang on excuse one second. Me. Hang on, sorry, one second, I'm just talking to my daughter. I apologize, my daughter is at the window, so she's trying to get my attention. I just needed to give her that moment. My wife is out, and so I have my three-year-old with me tonight. I'd like to think, I'd like to proceed with calling a vote. And Paul, see who would like to Paul, Paul, we're gonna say something before you went to talk to your daughter. Um, this is Paul. I'm in support of Carl, Olivia, and Mr. Kelly. Oh, God. Thank you. Chair West, this is Charlie Kim. I, I think a vote can be called, and even no matter what the result is, let's say let's say it's a down vote, right, or too many obsessions to get, this can be brought up in old business, and, and, and somebody can call and make a motion to bring the letter up to be approved. Like this can keep going and going. I just I just want to clarify in in my understanding of how this could work in Robert's rules that this isn't a binary thing. This. I believe this doesn't go away. And if you want to call a vote, um, but I'm, I'm just stating, I'm not exactly sure if it is good for us to take a survey kind of of where people stand in order to call a vote versus calling the vote, letting people vote, and then okay. the, the, the parties at the next meeting, if they didn't make it and they really don't like the results, they can call you know, by order again to call the vote again. So I, I just want to make that clear. And I know that we have Mr. Kelly on here um, that, that I believe that, that this, this isn't a binary thing. This, this can keep going and going and going in old, in, in old business. But I do agree that 
holding it over and, and we're not having that much discussion is, is also, I don't believe, a healthy thing to, 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 to just keep passing on this. Um, so I, I think it is, it's important enough that, Chair, if you believe that it should be brought to a vote that, or anybody should bring it to a vote, see where it goes, and then if it doesn't go the way that it can be brought up in, in, in um, old business the next meeting and, and it can be called for another vote. This is Carl. I say let's bring it to a vote then, based on shot and see what happens. We do have a quorum. If you feel as though it's better for everyone to participate in this vote, we could hold it and table it to the next meeting. I leave it up to you as the chair. I can't open the vote, so I can only make a suggestion. As the chair, I cannot call the vote. Someone has to ask. This is Carl. I say let's take a vote. I make a motion. Do we have a second for Carl? This is Olivia. I second his motion. In favor of the letter, please say A or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I don't see any opposition to this. Any abstaining? Aye. We have, I'm abstaining. I think we have a tie. Four yes, four abstaining. <laughs> and four is not a majority. So we don't have a majority. So we cannot move forward with the letter of support. And time has run out. We will table this discussion for September when we have more board members with us. And I apologize for the additional discussion that we'll be having. The next agenda item, new business. Wait, what, what? You asked me to bring up something on the old business? Oh, yes. Yes. The language bill, yes. And I'll be real quick, because we can bring... Agenda. That's not on the agenda, so I apologize. No, that's so, fine. Oh. We can bring this up again in September, but I just wanted to let everybody know that the caption and bill at the State House, which was based on the model of what the city of Boston passed um, in terms of captioning on television set to make that statewide, the bill will be heard on October 10th. And I want to, A, get as many members to come and testify as we can, and um, Perhaps we can all reach out to, I mean, Wes, you're part of the deaf community, Charlie and, uh, uh, I mean, others, and I, myself, are part of the Hardy Hearing community. We can do outreach and get as many people to come to testify. And maybe in September, since I know we're running short of time, we can talk about 
writing a letter of support, and maybe even getting some folks from the city of Boston to participate in as been a success. So again, the here interview was captioning for television and public places on October 10th, and I will send out more information to the West and, and Commissioner McCarthy to share with the committee as we get closer. I'll be right back. I have a hungry toddler who is demanding my attention. Oh. I am so sorry. I am back. Thank you so much, Carl. Yes, absolutely. We need to share this with the deaf and hard of hearing community and they need to know about this bill with enough advance notice so people can plan to participate in the testimony because I think this is very important. New business. Is there any individuals here who would like to share new business? Is there any new business to discuss? Hearing none. Now we have time for public input. Is there any members of the public who would like to comment? Now is the time for the, we have up to two minutes for members of the community, the public to comment. John Kelly, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, I hope that the advisory board would consider having a live component for ADA day. I could see someone with a cell phone or a camera just interviewing people there, um, service providers, information groups, um, and, and or to have something inside because uh, much of the spinal cord community and the MS community and really, really anyone, it's very, very hard to be, a, to be baking on that brick uh, and granite plaza. So um, just a hope that, uh, you know, that there would be something that we could participate in virtually uh, on that special day. Thank you. Thank you for your input, John. We'll pass on that message to the Commissioner McCosh. Are there any other comments from the public? Any members of the community? Please raise your hand. Is this Carl? Do I get to make my motion? Yes. I second. I second uh, Carl's motion. Oh, I haven't made it yet. All right. When you make your motion, I second it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>
I'd, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn so I can go buy my foul ball winning ticket. I second the, emo the motion. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned at 7.30 on time. Thank you. And we will see you all in September. Remember, we have no meeting next month. Take care. Good night.